Design Shop is very flexible in how it allows you to uh, manipulate and customize your workspace. So you have the ability to change where your toolbars are located. You have the ability to change your measurement units, as well as setting up a lot of your user preferences. So let's take a look at Design Shop and see where all of those are located. To start, let's look at the toolbars themselves. So on the left of the toolbars, you'll see a vertical bar. If I click and drag on that vertical bar, that will allow me to move my toolbar off of where the toolbars are typically docked. And I can resize that by clicking on the side and dragging to change the size of my toolbar. I could move this anywhere on my screen. I could dock it somewhere else. I could move it onto another monitor. If you have two monitors, that can be pretty handy for you. Um, if I want to put it back where it was previously docked, the easiest way for me to do that is to double click on the top of the toolbar itself and it will snap back into place. If I accidentally close it and I want access to those tools again, the easiest way to get them back is to right click in a blank area of that toolbar and put a check mark by the toolbar that you're missing. So right now I'm missing the view bar. As soon as I click on that, it comes back. And again, to get it back into place, I'm gonna double click on the top of that toolbar. It snaps back up into place. If you are trying to get this back and you right click and it's not a blank area of that toolbar, you're gonna to get the menu for customize and that customizes the icons that are on the individual toolbars themselves. Rather than if I'm in a blank area and right click, it will give me access to show or hide the different toolbars. If I can't seem to get to that, I can go to view and go down to toolbars and access that same kind of checklist. The project view works in much the same way, except for instead of the vertical bar on the left, you have a horizontal bar on the top. And if I click and drag that, I can move it off. I can rescale, uh, resize it. I can move it onto another monitor. Um, I could accidentally close it to get it back. Again, right click up here. This time, go down to project views and go to project view one or go to view project views project view one to bring it back and then I'm going to double click on the top to snap it back to where it was previously docked. So you've got the ability to customize your workspace so that you have a little bit more room and a little bit more real estate when you're digitizing and that can be very very helpful. The other options that you have are going to be located under tools and options and let's take a look at the preferences. So in the preferences on the bottom you've got icons um, and you can change your icons from color or grayscale. So depending on your, your kind of preferences and how you like to work, you can change that by changing, uh, by clicking on the radio button associated with the color scheme that you want for Design Shop, and then hit apply and okay. Now, this setting will require a restart of Design Shop. The other ones won't. The next one up is digitizing sound. As I'm digitizing, um, every click typically would have a beep associated with it. Um, I have that turned off on mine because I like to listen to music when I'm digitizing and so the beeping kind of fights with the music a little bit so I tend to turn that off. You also can change the size and the shape of your digitizing cursor. Auto scroll. When I'm digitizing along and I hit the side of the screen um, you'll notice that it starts to move for you. If you don't like that you can change it. You can uncheck that box or if you want to change the speed you can do that as well. Constrained line angle is when you're digitizing, um, if you hold alt, it will snap your line to a constrained line angle. By default, it's set to 15 degrees. You have the ability to change that here as well. And then the one on the top, let me cancel out of that so I can have this selected. The one on the top, preferences, is point size. And what that deals with is the input points. So these little triangles and the circles that you see. Um, as I'm working with this, those are kind of what I grab to edit. Um, my shapes, it helps if I can see them. So you have the ability to change your point size. And typically when I'm teaching, I tend to slide this up so that it makes it a little bit easier to see on screen for anybody watching this. Um, when I hit apply, watch what happens to those. They just get a little bit bigger. So you have the ability to change that and you may choose to change that depending on your screen resolution or how you like to work and that's just completely a user preference. 
All right, the last one that I want to look at is under the measurement units tab. And in here, you can change the measurement units for the different parts of your embroidery design. So I can look at density in points or millimeters or centimeters. Um, I can change all of these by whatever they, they are. So density, stitch length, column width, letter height, they can all be different. Typically, I'm um, guessing you'll be looking at letter height and design size, and then most likely hoops more, most often. Um, I tend to have my letter height and design size in inches because that's what I'm familiar with. I also tend to work with my hoops in centimeters, which is a little bit different, but it's what I'm used to. So customize your design shop workspace and preferences to work with what you're used to and how you're familiar working. And you have the ability to go in and work with all of those preferences, all of those settings, and customize your workspace to work very well for you.